global warming leads to a more rapid change in our climate. We have areas that are dry becoming drier, areas that are wet becoming wetter. Intense precipitation has actually increased 71% in the Northeast. So in a lot of ways, New York is dealing with climate change on a much bigger scale than the national average and even the global average. Our sea level is rising here in the city, there's no doubt about it. In Hurricane Sandy, we had a six, seven foot surge here and every inch that the water is higher is just one more inch that it's going to flood our neighborhood. Residents and business owners want to know, how do I take care of the next high tide? How do I deal with the next flood? Climate change is coming to every city and we have an opportunity to make better choices that work for both now and for later. In order for communities to become climate resilient, they must adapt. One strategy is to use inspirational climate adaptive design. What are you working on? Doing our markups for the board. Yeah. We have oh, you're already doing that. That's great. My name is Josh Sarah. I'm an assistant professor in landscape architecture. And this is our Cornell Climate Adaptive Design Studio. The New York DEC has partnered with Cornell University's Landscape Architecture Department to create the Climate Adaptive Design Studio, or CAD. The estuary program, our program, has annual grants that have a lot to do with flood resilience, green infrastructure, etc. I'm Libby Zemitis. I'm a partner in the Climate Adaptive Design Studio, and I link in state resources and the communities into the program. When you engage municipalities directly in a design studio, you really get teaching, research, and community benefits. The CAD collaboration supports a program called Climate Smart Communities. It's a certification program similar to LEAD for Buildings, but it shows how dedicated to climate a community is and provides them funding and support. We finished projects in the city of Hudson, Catskill, and now we're in the city of Kingston. The design process begins with site visits to the community CAD is partnering with. Yeah. You can see where all this, set, all this sediment is yeah. built up. That, that, that. I work with the students to understand what climate change is. After that, we develop a set of working design concepts, some initial ideas, and then go and meet with people that are in the municipality we're working in. Right now, we'll have a half an hour for the students to introduce their design concept and then have a conversation. We met with key stakeholders, landowners, business owners, residents, and municipal staff. So you have to please multiple people while also still trying to be an ecologically responsible designer. It's really not very pedestrian friendly currently. How did you guys propose to handle that? A lot of the communities we're working with, they're small, they're very limited in terms of staff and financial resources. So to have a group of students come in and offer really great design assistance, it's really a huge benefit to them. Bright young kids, I mean, it doesn't get any better than that, right? <laughs> The students are going to take the feedback, incorporate those into their designs when they go back to the studio. We got a lot of feedback. The people didn't think what we had would work and they know the city better than we do, so we've changed our design since then. From there, we go on to move this towards a much more complete sense of what might be possible. Finally, we finish off with our final stakeholder open house. Can you tell me about your concept here? And the students present their design alternatives to the community. But that's really where the community process truly begins. We really hope to inspire communities to change. And they get back to the original path and it symbolizes kind of a commitment to change. We hope that people will take these ideas and develop them further so that their cities can be what they would like them to become. We talk a lot about building resilience in communities. These Cornell students are really helping illustrate that graphically. You put a lot of time and effort and work into this. This was, this was a long studio, but it was fun. The product that they've put together is something that will be able to be useful for us into the future. So I can't wait to see what goes on next. To me, the most exciting part of CAD is the fact that we've flipped the conversation around climate change from a negative to a positive. We're also envisioning that it's going to be something more playful, so people can interact with the water on site. I think this is a great design. I think that solving some of these flooding problems will be really significant.
getting people to see a vision for the future that brings in economic development, public safety, conserving natural resources. We're wrapping that all in with climate adaptation. Seeing these, these visions, you know, seeing these graphic designs, I am feeling inspired. It's so wonderful to work in the Hudson River Valley. It has such sensitive natural beauty and such character and community and how we can put that together in a future where climate change is in the mix is really what I think this project is all about.